What's up future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're breaking down two basic modes of mechanical ventilation. Control mandatory ventilation versus assist control mandatory ventilation. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's break down these two modes of mechanical ventilation. As I said, we have CMV, which stands for Controlled Mandatory Ventilation. And then we have Assist Control, which stands for Assist Control Mandatory Ventilation. So from now on, I'm gonna to refer to these as CMV and AC. Now you may notice something right here. I have a little VC right here in front of these two modes of mechanical ventilation. Now the reason that VC is there is to illustrate for you that this first segment, when we're talking about settings and, and what we tell the vent to do, uh, we're going to be operating in volume control. Now, if you remember from the previous video, we talked about when you're in volume control, you're going to set parameters that control volume and delivered volume, but pressure will vary. Now, we can easily change this to pressure control and have PC-CMV or PC-AC. When we do that, we change our settings. We no longer set a tidal volume, now we set an inspiratory pressure, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start out in volume control and we're just gonna break the settings down first of all, okay? Now I'm starting with CMV. Why? Because CMV was the original godfather of, of, of modes of mechanical ventilation, okay? Now, I, I did a video on this a long time ago and in that video I said, I'm really not even going to talk about CMV because it's really not used much anymore. Well, the problem with that is, is that the TMC still puts CMV on the exam and um, new ventilators are actually coming out that have a CMV mode of mechanical ventilation. So I feel like you need to have a good rough understanding of it. What are its advantages? What are its disadvantages? Okay. And we're going to break that down here. So what do we set? Well, if we're in volume control CMV, we're going to set a tidal volume. Okay, we will tell the tidal volume how much, how big to make each breath, okay, or how small to make each breath, all right? So we'll tell it 450 milliliters, 500 milliliters, 400 milliliters, whatever it is, we're going to set the tidal volume. That is going to be controlled by the ventilator, okay? Uh, we're going to tell the vent how fast to deliver that tidal volume. So not only do you have to tell it how much to give, you have to tell it how fast to deliver it. And that's what flow does, okay? If you set a higher flow, then you deliver that tidal volume faster. That means you'll have a shorter eye time. So some vents, you will not set flow. Instead, you will set eye time, okay? Now, here's what I want to show you. Tidal volume and flow work together to establish a fixed eye time. If you're setting eye time instead of flow, which is what some vents do, an option on a lot of vents actually, then you understand that your eye time in conjunction with your tidal volume is establishing your flow. Okay, so you have to understand that, that eye time is how long the inspiratory phase will last that's dependent on how much we're giving and how fast we're giving it, okay? So those two things are set. We also set a respiratory rate. We have to tell the ventilator how often to deliver a breath. It does so, it, we do that by setting a frequency or a respiratory rate, okay? So I, I have a tendency to say respiratory rate. A lot of uh, students are learning it in terms of frequency. It's fine, they're, they're interchangeable. Okay, so just understand that that's what it is. This will tell the vent how often to deliver this tidal volume at this flow. Okay, so we set a respiratory rate. Now when we set this respiratory rate, two things happen. Okay, our tidal volume and our rate establish our minute ventilation or our minute volume. So if you tell the ventilator to deliver a tidal volume of 500, milliliters and you put it on a rate of 10 then it's going to give 10 breaths over the course of 60 seconds at 500 apiece is going to give us a minute ventilation of 
5,000 milliliters or five liters. Okay, so you understand that these two tidal volume and respiratory rate establish your minute volume. Your minute volume is what is responsible for the removal, the overall removal of carbon dioxide, which is important. That's going to help keep our pH in the right, um, in, a, in, the, in a normal range. Okay, so we got to understand that concept. Now, the other thing you have to, have to understand when you talk about respiratory rate is this also establishes our total cycle time. Okay, total cycle time, which means how long will each breath last? Different from eye time, how long will we give, what does it take to deliver the breath? the inspiratory phase. When we say total cycle time, we are talking about I time and E time. Okay, so you have both phases, inspiratory phase and expiratory phase together create your total cycle time. That's established by your respiratory rate, okay? So for example, if we're giving 10 breaths per minute, that's the setting that we set it on then we understand that if we're giving 10 breaths per minute, then that's gonna be 60 seconds divided by 10 breaths equals six seconds. This six seconds is our total cycle time. That means the ventilator is going to deliver a breath every six seconds. It has to get the breath in and then passive exhalation, all of that air needs to come out and then six seconds later, another breath is coming, okay? That's total cycle time. That's respiratory rate is what establishes total cycle time, okay? Let me get rid of this and make some more room here. All right, now, I told you that the respiratory rate establishes total cycle time, which tells the ventilator how often to initiate inspiration, okay? so. If we're on a rate of 10, we have a six second total cycle time. When is the ventilator going to initiate the next breath? Well, we already said six seconds. Well, six seconds is time, right? So that tells us that in CMV, our trigger is time and only time. This is key. Remember I said that. Remember I said that in CMV, our trigger is time and only time. And it's gonna make sense here in just a second. We also have um, our cycle. What tells the ventilator to stop inspiration and begin expiration, okay? Now, a lot of people in volume control learn that your cycle is volume. And if you learn that, that's okay. All right, that's fine. Okay, you can, you can understand and you can make sense. The vent delivers the breath until the set tidal volume is delivered and then it turns off and exhalation begins. Okay, so if you learned volume, then that's fine. And I hope this doesn't give a, a, a state of confusion out there. But you have to understand that the cycle is actually time also, but this is inspiratory time. Now remember, I told you that the ventilator operates off of flow and tidal volume that establishes eye time, right? Well, the vent doesn't just take 500 milliliters and put it to the side and go, oh, ready for another breath? Give that 500. No, the ventilator operates off of delivering a set flow for a certain amount of time that will equate to this much volume being delivered, okay? So the, the cycle mechanism truly is I time again, okay? If you set an I time, then this makes perfect sense. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it delivers this tidal volume over this I time, but expiration begins at the end of I time, okay? So, I hope that didn't confuse anybody. I may offer a, another video clarifying that a little bit more, uh, but for right now, just understand that in volume control, your cycle is I time. Um, if you learned it as volume, that's okay. It's not, it's not that big of a deal, okay? But just understand um, that key concept. And then we have some limits that we need to talk about when we're talking about volume control. Several limits here. First of all, tidal volume, okay? So tidal volume will not be exceeded. If you have 500 set, the ventilator is not going to deliver 600, 700, 800. It's a limit. 
it stops. It will not exceed that tidal volume. That's what a limit is, right? Limit is what will not be exceeded upon inspiration. We also, if you set flow or if you set I time, then those are also limits. If you tell the ventilator to deliver a flow of 60 liters per minute, it will not deliver 80 liters per minute. It will deliver that breath at 60 liters per minute. And you can see this on your flow waveform. Okay, this is why we get asynchronies happening with people who are flow hungry because they want a flow of 80 liters per minute, but the vent is set on 60 liters per minute and they're not happy. Why? Because the vent won't give them 80 liters per minute because flow is a limit in volume control. Okay, same with eye time, it's a limit. Okay, now the other one you need to know about is, um, I'm gonna erase this so I don't lose my board here, is uh, our high pressure. Alarm. We will set an alarm at a high pressure, okay? When that alarm is reached, so if you set your alarm, let's say at 50 centimeters of water pressure, or let's say 40 centimeters of water pressure, if that, in, during inspiration, if that breath, if the pressure reaches, which is variable, the pressure is going to vary based off of air resistance and compliance. But if that pressure rises and it hits that upper pressure limit, then it's going to terminate the inspiratory phase it's going to cut off the delivered tidal volume and it is going to cycle into expiration, okay? So this is a limit. It will not let you exceed your high pressure limit, okay? Those are the key things that you need to know about um, CMV when we're setting things. Now look, I didn't put FIO2 up here, but yes, you set an FIO2. I didn't put PEEP up here, but yes, you're most likely going to be setting a PEEP, okay? But those are two settings that are, are, are essentially available on every mode of mechanical ventilation. They do not separate uh, one mode from another. FIO2 and PEEP essentially go with every mode, okay? So yes, you'll set those. No, I'm not putting them on the board because quite frankly, I don't have a big enough board, okay? Now, remember I told you that the trigger here was time and only time? This is what makes CMV, CMV. Now that we have everything up here, we understand that the ventilator in CMV is going to deliver a set tidal volume at a set flow at a set respiratory rate based off of the time cycle, okay? Which is the trigger, time and time alone. That means that the patient cannot initiate a breath. That means that everything that happens in CMV is all controlled by the ventilator. There is no patient control at all. The patient can do nothing in this mode and that's what makes CMV CMV. Okay? Patient can do nothing. Now watch the difference from AC to CMV. We set a tidal volume. We set a flow or an eye time. We set a respiratory rate. Our cycle is the same. Our limits are the same. Guess what the difference is? The patient can now ask for a breath. So time is also a trigger which tells the ventilator when to give a breath based off of the same concept, based off of the total cycle time. A rate of 10, six seconds total cycle time, a breath coming every six seconds, okay? But look what happens. In assist control, we set all of these things except we also set a patient trigger, which we know is pressure or flow trigger, okay? That's the difference. So if you're ever asked, what's the difference in assist control or VCAC versus VCCMV, the difference is, is that the patient can ask for a breath. The patient has the ability to trigger a breath. We do so through pressure or flow triggering, not both. It's not pressure and flow. It's one or the other. You decide which one is best for your patient, okay? Now, by doing so, what we understand here is that in AC, the ventilator is going to give a set tidal volume at a set flow, at a set respiratory rate. 
It's going to do so from the vent side based off of time, but it will allow the patient to trigger a breath before the time trigger happens. Let me say that again. In assist control, the patient, via pressure or flow triggering, can initiate a breath before the ventilator's time trigger happens. Okay? The cycle is the same. It's still I time cycled. If you learned it as volume, that's fine. Limits are all still the same. Flow, I time, tidal volume, and your high pressure limit alarm. Okay? So that's the difference between AC and CMV. Now let's look at this in regards to some waveforms, okay? Because that's going to help you really make sense, okay? So I'm going to get rid of all of this. And I'm going to draw three waveforms up here. This is pressure. This is flow. This is volume. Okay? So pressure, flow, volume on the waveforms. Now, the way this looks is like this. When we see a breath being given, we already know that we have, let's just say we have a tidal volume of 500, a flow of 60 liters per minute, and a rate of 10. Those are the three things I said we set, right? So tidal volume 500, flow of 60, respiratory of 10. Now remember, the vent's going to deliver these three things just as is. It will not vary. Okay, those things are set. That's how the vent's going to operate. So we know that if we have a tidal volume of 500 set, that we can look at our, our volume waveform. Okay, and I'm going to start here at 1. We're going to see a breath come in and a breath come out. Okay, and guess what? It reached 500. Why? Because the vent is controlling the amount of volume being delivered. So it's, <clears throat> it is going to be at or very near that 500 every single time. Now, we also said that we have a flow of 60. So I can come over here and draw 60 liters per minute. I'm gonna draw a little mark here, one. I'm, I'm gonna mark these times because it's important when we're looking at the time cycle, okay? So we look at the flow and the flow can be square. The flow can be decelerating, fully decelerating. The flow can be partially decelerating, or it can be sinusoidal, okay? Now, a lot of vents won't let you choose sinusoidal in the CMV mode. Some will. It's not a big deal. Most of the time when we're in AC or if you're in CMV, you're going to be using square or one of the decelerating patterns, okay? So just keep that in mind. I'm going to keep the square form up there for now, okay? So now look. Breath goes in. Flow rate rises to what? 60. Why? Because it's told to do so. So the flow is going to be 60. And then it flow comes down, exhalation, it drops below baseline and then rises back to baseline. Okay? This tells us that air went in, now air came out, and when it gets back to baseline, all the air has emptied the patient's lungs. Okay? No air trapping present. All right? So when we look at our pressure waveform, we're going to start at one second. And as the volume goes in, we see this slow rise. And then upon exhalation, it comes out. Now remember, we're on a rate of 10, right? If we're on a rate of 10, then that means six seconds is going to go by and the vent's going to deliver another breath. So I can draw another tick right here. We're gonna call this seven. One, seven, that's six seconds. Another breath is coming. I'm going to draw another one here at 13. Why 13? Because six seconds is our total cycle time. We're going to see another breath come here. Okay? Those are our pressure breaths. Now we draw another tick here at seven. Another tick here at seven. You're going to see your volume goes in, comes back down. Volume goes in, comes back down. This is 13. Okay? That's a messed up drawing, but you understand what I'm saying, right? You're still going to 500, okay? The key here is that all of these are reaching 500. Every breath is gonna be 500. Same with the flow. Seven seconds, we're gonna come up to 60 and down. 13 seconds, flow's going to be delivered. All of these 
are the same. 60 liters per minute, because the vent's going to do two things every single breath, always the same. Deliver the set tidal volume, deliver the set flow. Now what's varying? Oh, you picked up on that, right? Pressure is varying, right? So you can see where your pressure waveforms will vary along the way. This is what CMV looks like, okay? There are no patient efforts here. The ventilator is controlling everything, hence controlled mandatory ventilation, okay? Now, what if the patient wants a breath? Well, you might see something like this in between these breaths, right? Now, this is the patient saying, I'm trying to take a breath. They're initiating a breath. Their diaphragm is dropping and it will create a negative pressure within the circuit and you will see a negative deflection on your pressure waveform. This is what we call a patient ventilator asynchrony. Now this just sounds cruel to me, right? Why would you tell a patient you're going to help them breathe and then put them on a mechanical ventilator and not satisfy their drive to breathe, right? This seems like torture. All right, so what could we do to help this patient? Well, we could switch from CMV to AC, okay? When we switch from CMV to AC, you're gonna notice something happen. Now, when this patient initiates this breath right here, okay, and I gotta get rid of these future ones here. So remember, the next breath is coming at seven, right? But instead of the ventilator waiting until that six seconds happens, in assist control, the ventilator asked for one at four seconds, okay? So this is a patient effort. So the ventilator gives the breath because that's what assist control does. You turned on the patient trigger, remember? We set a sensitivity either in flow or pressure. And now we see the patient initiating a breath and a breath being given, the ventilator is delivering the breath. But here's what the vent does. The vent says, okay, you want a breath, that's fine. I'll give you one, but I'm told to give you the breath that looks like this. So I'll help you, I'm gonna let you take a breath but the breath is controlled. So I'm going to give it to you and it's going to look like this. Tidal volume 500, flow of 60. See, it's still a controlled breath. It's still the ventilator saying, I'm in control of the way your breath looks. But in assist control, I'm gonna give you a little freedom to at least ask me to give you a breath. And then I'll give you what I'm told to give you. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. Now watch what happens to our total cycle time. Remember in CMV, we had a breath coming at one and we had another breath coming at seven and another breath coming at 13, right? Well, guess what? When the patient takes this breath right here at four, the total cycle time starts over from that point. So when is the ventilator now going to give the next breath? Six seconds later. So now no longer is there one coming at 13, now there's one coming at, at 10, six seconds after this breath. So another breath is coming at 10. Another breath, time triggered, Pressure will vary. How do I know that this was a time triggered breath? Because there was no patient initiation like this. So whenever you see this, this, this little deflection, you know the patient triggered that breath. This is now a time triggered breath. This is the ventilator doing what it's supposed to do. Give a breath every six seconds. If the patient asks for one sooner, give it to them. But your clock starts over. Six seconds later, you give it a breath. You see the vents, a very sophisticated machine, but it's also kind of dumb. Like it doesn't recognize that, that, okay, I gave a breath here. Actually, it does recognize it. It says I gave a breath here because the patient wanted one, but it was my breath. So my clock starts over. And so six seconds later, another breath is coming. What if the patient initiates one here at eight? This breath will never happen. The patient initiates another one. The breath is given, 
The clock starts over. Now the vent's going to 14 seconds to the 14 mark, six seconds after this. Okay, this is assist control. You have to understand that in assist control, your, your, your patient has no control over flow, no control over volume. The only thing they have control over is asking the ventilator to give them a breath. And if they do so effectively using the pressure trigger or the flow trigger, then the ventilator will respond by delivering a volume controlled breath that you tell the ventilator to give. That's very different than CMV. CMV, the ventilator does what it's told to do and nothing more and the patient has no say so in the mechanical ventilator process, okay? So that's a quick breakdown. I mean, I didn't even want this video to, to go much past uh, 15 minutes and here I am at 25 minutes. And, and so it's really hard to break these modes down uh, succinctly and clearly and comparatively in a short amount of time. I do the best I can. The next video is gonna break down SIMV and we're gonna compare SIMV to AC, okay? So we're gonna be talking about VC, SIMV versus VC, AC. We'll come back and talk about pressure control, okay? So PC, CMV, PC, AC. Same concept, except now you're controlling pressure and I time and your flow will be decelerating and your volume will vary. So just flip these. Instead of pressure varying, volume will vary and your waveform becomes square. But the concepts on how the patient gets a breath, on how the patient can't breathe, is the same in PCCMV versus VCCMV. PCAC versus VCAC. Hey guys, I got some exciting news here. I got... Um, some new shirts in. I get lots of questions about this. People always want to know, hey man, where do I find one of those why greater than how shirts? Well, finally got them back in and they're here for you to request if you're interested and if you want one. If you're interested, send me an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com. You can find that email in the description uh, below and I will tell you the two ways you can get one. Obviously, you can buy one or I'll give you one for free. Send me an email to find out how, okay? Hit that subscribe button and I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you soon when we break down SIMV versus AC. Best wishes.